guys, Dan Blatt's back here again, continuing on in that same vein of thought. If you were with me on the last one, this book, The Catechism with Globus Bekentness, Catechism with Articles of Faith, is a book that we learned and read and repeated over and over and over again when we were getting baptized in the old colony system. And to most of us, at least in my generation, with the language barrier that there was, I was raised knowing English and understanding German, but the high German was very difficult for me. But I could have easily understood it had I just been dedicated to really wanting to know the truth. If I had been persistent and really wanted to know how to be saved, I could have gone against what I was taught as a young man by the church, by my family, by tradition, and I could have believed this book and I could have believed the Bible. But instead, I went along with the flow and I read these words with my head, with my mouth, but they never entered my heart. They were never real to me. I just simply read them out of repetition, out of religion. But had I looked carefully and closely, these words could have and would have taught me the way of eternal life. It's right here. What is justification? How do you become just? The word justification, some people have, the word justified, some people have broken it down and said that it could be kind of like, just as if I died, or somewhere along those lines. It's as if you had paid the penalty. It's as if you had already appeased God's wrath and God's anger. Because Jesus did it for you. We looked at it last time, 2 Corinthians 5.21. God made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now here he says, what is justification? How do we become justified? When a repentant sinner turns through his faith is declared righteous in Christ. So not only are our sins forgiven, but the catechism, the old test, I mean the old colony catechism, it says that if you believe in the finished work of Jesus, you are declared to be righteous. You are declared as if you had never sinned, as if you had already died, as if you had already paid the death penalty because Jesus paid it for you. And he gives these, these references, Romans 4 verse 5, the wages of sin is death. There's that one in Romans 3. Um, if God for, died for the ungodly, Christ died for the ungodly. And then he gives that passage again, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. And then he says, is a sinner justified by his grace? Meaning, grace is a word that if you break it down and use an acronym, meaning use the words G or the, the word and the letters G-R-A-C-E, one of the best uh, descriptions of this word grace that I've heard is G stands for God. God's riches at Christ's expense. Remember those words. God's riches at Christ's expense. You and I are benefiting from God's riches and they are given to us at Christ's expense. Meaning Christ paid for them. You didn't deserve them. You didn't earn them. You have no merit. Another way to describe this word that people use, a definition they often use, is that it is God's unmerited favor. You have God's favor on your life, and you did not merit it. You did not earn it. That's what grace means. Is a sinner justified by his grace? Well, a Mennonite would say, well, we don't know for sure. We can't say. We, we hope that this is the case. If there is any hope, that's our only hope, but we won't know until the day we die. We won't know. What is faith then? Why bother having faith? Why trust in the grace of God? Is the sinner justified by grace? Yes. As plain as day, yes. We are justified freely without any merit of our own. Meaning you did not do any good works to deserve being justified. You didn't go to church your whole life to earn it. You didn't get baptized to earn it. You didn't pray prayers to earn it. You didn't read the Bible to earn it. Without any merit of our own, by God's grace, through the redemption of that is in Christ Jesus. And then he quotes Romans 3, 24 again. So the, the people who put this book together and the articles of this faith together, they believed and knew something that I was not taught as a Mennonite boy. Now, I'm not going to blame anybody. My parents didn't know any better. They were trying to do what they knew how to do. They have since come to the faith and understand this gospel the same way I now do. And they rejoice in salvation as a free gift. But we didn't understand it. And here he says plainly, is a sinner justified by faith, by his grace? Yes, absolutely. 
Only by God's grace will you ever be saved, but you are saved by His grace. We don't have to wait. See, most Mennonites think that uh, you see this illustration given all the time. You have a scale. You know, if I have some good works here and some bad works here, we just hope that there's enough good works to outweigh the bad works. And then on the day of judgment, God will look at your good works and say, yeah, let's forget about those bad works. That has nothing to do with Jesus. Here it says we are freely justified by his grace. Why? Because Jesus took the, good, the bad works and the good works because our good works, the Bible says, are as filthy rags in Isaiah. So he took all of our works that are not nearly good enough and he took upon them, he took them upon himself and he died as if he were the sinner, making you justified so that we could be freely forgiven. Wherein does justification benefit us? To have peace with God as his children, to have been freed from the bondage of sin and to be aided in perfecting holiness. So like this book is just chock full of Bible truth that we did, were never taught as, as Mennonites growing up. I did not understand these things. And I think I can be so bold as to say most of the preachers that taught us on the Wednesday night school, Thursday night school, whichever it was, I think it was Wednesday night when we were preparing for baptism, most of them did not understand these concepts. They could repeat the words. They could say, yes, I agree that that's true in my head. But it was not a passion on their heart where they would tell people, believe on the Lord Jesus. Turn from your old ways. Trust in him and he will forgive you. That was not taught. It, it was simply, well, you, you hope that God will have mercy. And you better do the best that you can. Read your Bible, pray every day, go to church, make sure you give your money. And in the end, hopefully, your good works will be more than your bad works. And I, I'm telling you, that leaves Jesus out of it. His death, his burial, his finished work, as this book declares, the Catechism and the Bible, it says in here that we trust in his finished work. And by that we are freely, freely justified. Meaning, you do not become a Christian by being a good person. No more than you, you could you become a car by being in a garage. You don't become a Christian by going to church. You don't become a Christian by reading the Bible or by reciting this book or by getting baptized. You have to be a car to be a car. You can't just go into a garage and think that now you're a car. You cannot be a Christian simply by going to church. You cannot be a Christian simply by reading this book. You cannot be a Christian by going through the baptismal course and getting water put on your head. The only way you can be saved is by trusting in the finished work of Jesus and then God freely justifies you and he makes you holy and he counts you as righteous in the same way that he counted Jesus to be the sinner. Jesus was counted, made to be a sinner so that we could be counted and made to be righteous. I, I love that this book teaches that because now I can look at it and say, look, this book right here, teaches that we can be saved, that we are saved through the finished work of Jesus.